So just to start with a little recap here, you can see from the aerial view of my house here, I've got a flat roof there, and there's the flat roof from the ground level. The kit what I bought was a Solax inverter, two kilowatt, and four of these Longi 405 watt solar panels. And here you can see exactly what kit I bought and how much it costs. And in the video, I go through what I bought, how I installed it, and how to monitor and how much power it produces. Please go back and watch that video if you haven't already, and then this video will make a lot more sense. One of the first things I did wrong in this video was to keep saying kilowatt per hour, where in fact I meant to say kilowatt hour. So I apologize for that. I'll make sure in the future it will just be kilowatt hour. So what mistakes did I make whilst installing this solar system? Mistake number one was the placement of the Solax inverter. As you can see here, the installation instructions clearly state that this inverter is intended for outside installation, tucked up under the eaves where it's got no direct sunlight, no rain exposure, and no snow layup. So what I thought was, hey, I'll follow the instructions, I'll tuck it up just under my eaves there, and it will protect it from uh, direct sunlight and rain and snow and so on. But uh, again, lots of people commented that, in fact, you're meant to leave a 300 millimeter gap at the top and all the way around the inverter, just for airflow. And as you can see here, I've tucked mine right up under the eaves. There's certainly not 300 millimeter gap. The second thing was when I installed this, which is at the height of summer, the sun is very high in the sky. And as you can see in this image, which was around midday, you can see that the shade created by the eaves is protecting the inverter from the direct sunlight. You've got a lot of shade there. But uh, as I've noticed, as summer's on its way out, and you can see by this diagram here, as you go out of summer, the sun gets lower and lower in the sky. So in fact, now the sun is directly on half of the inverter most of the day, which is not good. Number one, I needed to move this inverter from that wall out of direct sunlight. So the next question is, where do I put this thing? The installation manual clearly states it's, it's intended for an outside installation, preferably on a north facing wall. Now that makes it a bit tricky. If you've got your solar panels south facing, which is where you want them, you can't really put the inverter on a north facing wall, it just wouldn't work with the length of cables and so on. A lot of people have the ability to put this in a garage or shed or something uh, which is close by. I just don't have that option. So the next thing I looked at was to put this in the loft. And in fact, I considered putting it in the loft on the first install, but my loft gets very hot up there during the height of summer. That can easily get to 40 degrees up there. So I contacted Solax and asked them about a loft install. And then they said, no problem at all. As long as it's ventilated, a loft install shouldn't be a problem at all. To put this inverter in the loft, I needed to increase the airflow and ventilation in the loft. So I looked at buying these ventilation airflow spaces that sit between the felt in your loft and open up that gap so air can flow more easily. And you can see here, I fitted them. I bought two packs of these 10, so I had 20 of these and I'd done every other raft all the way along both sides of my loft, which really increased the airflow and brought the temperature down. So next, where do I put it in my loft? I've got a central chimney breast going up through the, the middle of my loft that had a good lot of space around it. So I decided to mount the inverter there. The other thing I did wrong on the initial installation was to neglect putting in a DC isolator. So this is an isolator switch, which will isolate the DC coming from the panels into the inverter. So if you need to do any work on the inverter at all, you can shut off the isolator, prevent any power going up to the inverter. I didn't originally install that because the inverter itself has a built-in isolator, but it's much better practice to have your own DC isolator separate to the inverter. And you can see here, I'm just installing that next to the inverter. Where I was installing the inverter in the new location, all my cables, my AC cable, my earth cable, my CT clamp cable were already running right underneath this chimney breast. So it was easy just to cut the wires a bit shorter and rewire them up to the inverter in this new location. 
Another thing I did in this update and this removal of the isolator was upgrade the inverter. I originally had a Solax X1 2 kilowatt. I upgraded it to a Solax X1 Boost 3 kilowatt. This one is a two string inverter, meaning I can have two completely different sets of panels on there in different locations. So now the new inverter is in the new location. Let's see what sort of power I'm saving. Now it's October, sun's getting a little lower in the sky and winter is getting a bit closer. There's a couple of reasons why my electricity usage has gone down. One is because my solar system and the other is because I've moved from a 10 kilowatt electric shower over to a thermostatic shower, which runs off of my gas boiler. So it's a lot cheaper to run, a lot less electricity is being used. Now you can see from this Octopus Energy import graph that's taken from my home assistant panel, midnight all the way through 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and so on, using 0.3 kilowatt hour, and uh, that's running the fridge. I've got my server running, which um, runs various virtual machines with CCTV and so on. Then you see people in the house are waking up, putting the TV on, making a coffee, kettle, that sort of thing, toast. But you can see here, once the sun starts coming out from 9 a.m. around this sort of period, you see my electricity usage goes down an awful lot. So I'm paying very little for my electricity around that period of time where the solar is uh, generating power. I work from home, so I've got computers running and various monitors and audio system and so on. There's a lot of power usage during that time. So it's a big saving that I'm making during the day. And then obviously when the sun goes down, evening time, when we're putting the oven on, using various utilities within the house, which are TVs and so on. Let's look at another day here, which was the 10th of October, which was a fairly sunny day. It was quite a bright day that day. You can see the sun starting to come up at 8 a.m. Not much sunshine there, but then the sun passes a large tree I have uh, at the back of my garden, and then the sunshine kicks in and hits the panels directly. And you can see here at 11 o'clock, we're, we're up to like 1,400 watts, something like that. Then a cloud comes over, covers the sun, goes back down here. It's quite varying throughout the day, depending on whether there's clouds and so on coming over. But you can see this day was quite a good day of solar generation. Sun starts to come down, teeters off there by sort of uh, six o'clock. If I switch to this graph, which shows kilowatt hour, this is a graph again from my home assistant. This is showing three days worth from the 10th to the 13th of October. And this is the same representation of what we were just looking at at the other graph, which was quite a sunny day. And we got, let's say 5.7 kilowatt hours that day. But as you can see the next day, the 11th wasn't great. We only got two kilowatt hours. And then the 12th was even worse with 0.5 kilowatt hours we got that day. Let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So this was the 12th, which only got 0.5 kilowatt hours. It was a very dark and drizzly day. No sun whatsoever, cloud and raining all day. You can see the maximum we got there, which was at 12.30. It jumped up to, what, 320 watts there. But the average is kicking along, let's say, 100 watts, something like that. And that whole day only produced 0.5 kilowatt hours. You can see that it was so dark in the morning, the inverter only kicked in with enough power at uh, gone 10 a.m., which normally that would start producing energy around 8, 8.30 a.m. Good to show you the contrast of a really drizzly day in the UK, which doesn't have much light, won't produce much power at all. As I say, we got 0.5 kilowatt hour that day. You can see from these three panels are uh, from my home assistant, this was from the 13th, which we only got about 1.5 kilowatt hours for that day. Very dark and dreary day. This was from 10 a.m. in the morning. And we can see we're only getting 47 watts. And you can see it's quite a dull, dreary day. Lots of drizzle. Just to explain a bit more about this screen, this is my doorbell camera, my back garden camera. You can see the solar panels up here. From the grid at this particular moment in time, we were pulling 426 watts. The solar was producing 47 watts. So those two values added together is 473 watts, the total power the house was using. This cupboard up here just shows all of my networking and my KVM server, how much power that's drawing. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. 
please take a look at my other videos and like and subscribe. Thanks very much.